Hello Booktube and now you're here again it's Saturday evening in Sweden and this is my second video uh, for today I'm gonna do a tag I've been doing uh, a book review or a kind of a book review as a part of a readathon maybe Midrash and it's it's pretty difficult to do that and and, and um, you know I, I really understand that this is <laughs> this is a profession that you need to have a skill for, so I need to train uh, train more uh, to do to do uh, better reviews and and uh, you know while I'm doing that I could also uh, I was thinking I could do some some tags because I heard tags are are easier to do and they are you know more entertaining to the viewers so I did al already a uh, newbie tag uh, it was quite fun to do so what I will do now. I'm gonna do a tag that is called the Reading the Humanities tag uh, that was originated by Richardson Reads. So uh, it's a set of questions, 12 questions. Um, first question is name a book or author who uses the field of or concepts from anthropology in their work. Uh, anthropology is pretty wide. Uh, it's pretty wide, but the one author that I was thinking about, I don't have any, you know, non-fiction works of anthropology, not that I know about that, I need to think more about it, but I was thinking one of fictional, uh, and it's Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov, it's, uh, I read Isaac Asimov when I was um, in my in my 20s, this the the foundation uh, series uh, of Isaac Asimov. This is in Swedish. It's called the uh, Stiftelsen in Swedish. So I read the, the whole series of I think it's seven books, and uh, the uh, Asimov is is uh, here um, telling a story about about um, uh, human civilization, uh, development of human civilization from you know uh, first uh, first uh, being a part of a great. Galactic Empire, uh, which was set, you know, many many years in the, in the future, and how that uh, Galactic Empire disperses into ashes, and then a new empire takes shape uh, um, in in, um, uh, in and it's called called the uh, called the Foundation. It's sh it takes shape in on the edge of the universe, and and he's um, he's using a, a, a new science. Um, they call it the psychohistory, by which through through uh, mathematical models based in the in uh, in what we know about the human behavior, about the advent uh, of civilizations, about the rise and falls of civilization, uh, you could predict, you know, when a civilization will get uh, will will get destroyed, and then you can you can plan for creating new civilization. So so, so that's. So that's one work that I'm that I kind of associate with the with the uh, uh, anthropology, so to say. I, yeah, I don't know if if somebody would agree to that. Anthropology certainly wouldn't do. But uh, you know, as a layman, I have a privilege of of uh, of being ignorant about about that topic. Um, second uh, book. Uh, second question is a book or author who uses archaeology in their work. And use of archaeology, uh, I like archaeology quite a lot. So, so I came across uh, um, a lot of, I've uh, been reading a lot of, a lot about that, and it's mostly non-fiction. Uh, so I could, you know, pick out, pick up any of them. But I was thinking about the non-fiction work, and in non-fiction work where archaeology is uh, used, um, it's there. There is a Swedish writer. He's called the P. C. Yersild, and. Um, he wrote a book, it's called Dom Undas Kloster, uh, the convent of the of the evil. And, um, and here in this book, it's, uh, it is a parallel story um, uh, where, where uh, uh, there is in 12, how Stockholm's in 12, 1200s, uh, how, how the, the, the Stockholm comes about as a city. And at the same, at the same time, you follow in, in, in today a team of archaeologists that are, that are digging and, and actually unwinding a story in, in uh, uh, today. So, it's, it's, uh, so, so this uh, you know, follows the archaeologists and the, the subject of their, of their, of their study. Um, it's uh, quite uh, quite good uh, uh, a novel. I'm I don't really know if it's translated into, into English. But then, if I was to think about you know work of po popular archaeology, uh, the one that got me quite excited about archaeology is this one. 
uh, digging for Richard III, uh, how archaeology found the king. And the, and the king was found under a parking lot uh, uh, in, in England. And, and it is, it is, uh, this book is describing how this, uh, this came about. It was in, in 2012 that, that Richard III was, was allegedly allegedly found so 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 this is this is a, a pretty pretty good one so let's see the question number three question number three have you read the work from ancient greece or rome if so what it is in, and uh, do you have a favorite author of work or work now uh, yes i yes i had uh, uh, quite a few actually and uh, my favorite there are there could be you know several I was thinking about several, but but the one that I picked up is still that I think about quite a lot is this one. It's um, Germany by by Tacitus. Now this is, this is a Oxford World Classic uh, volume with the Agricola and and Germany, but it, it's it's a Germany that is uh, that is the one. Um, and for me, uh, living in Sweden, this is one of the first works where actually Swedes are mentioned, and it's so. So the work is, you know, quite a big deal in uh, in uh, uh, when it comes to ancient history in uh, in Scandinavia. So, so Tacitus is uh, is my pick here. Um, history question number four: History. Do you have a favorite historical period you enjoy reading about? If so, what is it? Any books that stand out, and here you know it's, it depends of, of, of when you ask me. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of prone to to digging into you know different periods and reading a lot about them, and and the period that I'm I'm in currently, uh, and and I've been there like for the <laughs> last two years. Uh, honestly, it's it's ancient Egypt, and. Um, it's so fascinating, ancient Egypt. I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really interested in ancient Egypt uh, until I just, you know, something just sparked, and then uh, two years ago I started reading it, and I, it, it was just, you know, uh, uh, you know, I was exploring that. I've mean, been exploring that since. I'm, you know, visiting museums. I've been, you know, to British Museum several times, and to and to and to Petri Museum in 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 London, and and the, and to to Neues Museum in 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 Berlin. Uh, you know these these really really great uh, e Egyptology collections. So a book that I would pick is one. It's it's excellent. Really 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 great book. I I, I really love this book. Is this one, uh, the rise and fall of ancient Egypt by Toby Wilkerson uh, here in Random House publication. I saw, I saw it, it's, it's several different editions of this one that is published and it gives you the story of, of ancient Egypt uh, really from the beginning to the end uh, in in very very comprehensive way. It, it is pretty you know it's pretty thick volume but it goes very very fast uh, uh, to read because it's it is it's breathtaking story. It's beautiful. I really recommend this one. Okay, number five, linguistic or languages. Reading is about ling language among other things. What is your favorite translated work of literature? Now, uh, I'm a trilingual in, in practice. In practice, I'm a trilingual, but, but in, in, you know, in theory, in theory, I, I, I read in seven languages. Now, I, I read in, in, uh, in English. Obviously, I read in Swedish. And if you read in Swedish, then you understand also Danish and Norwegian. So I can actually read in Danish and Norwegian as well, and I do uh, sometimes. Then I read in, in Bosnian. And if you read in Bosnian, you can also read in Serbian and Croatian, which I also do. And, and, uh, and it's, you know, it's really the dialectal difference. The only thing with the Serbian is actually that you use Kyrillic uh, uh, alphabet, so I, I can read Kyrillic uh, as well. So it's three languages or seven languages. I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's Latinic and Kyrillic. So it, I read in quite. So, so so it is difficult, you know, to pick, you know, uh, up uh, uh, translate the work. Uh, so I was thinking about, you know, how should I answer this question? So I actually I will answer it from from a from a different perspective here. There is a translation of a great work that is originally in English that I really, really enjoyed uh, reading in Swedish, actually, with a fantastic translation. And this is this book by Charles Dickens. 
uh, a tale of two cities and a tale of two cities uh, I, I, it's 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 a fantastic fantastic work of liter li literature it actually got me really hooked on on from french revolution uh and in this translation in swedish is translation by lily olund that is beautifully done so i was reading uh uh, reading a bit in parallel between in, in English and Swedish, uh, looking into into some some sections, uh, and 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 I can I can confirm that that you know, the feeling you get when you read in English is the same when you read it in Swedish. It's it's, it's a perfect translation. It's really really good. And and by the way, this book is really beautiful. Of course, you know it's is in a guillotine. It's is not it's not, the, it's not the, you know a very nice thing. But the photograph here and the you know the book. It's great and this is the this is a, a swedish publisher called modernista that is publishing these beauties okay let's move on with the next question next question is in the area of law and politics do you read political books or books related to the law what are your favorites now as richardson says is that you know its shelf life of political books is pretty short it tends to be short uh, so so yeah I I do read that uh, uh, but you know due to the short sh shelf life I I don't see them as being you know relevant after a while but there is one book that uh, it is quite new one a uh, new book I read it uh, I read it uh, recently but I think that is going to stay relevant for a long period of time and that book is let's see in my shelf here it's here this one. We were eight years in power by uh, Tanahasi Coates, and this is a collection of essays uh, by Tanahasi Tana Coates, the essays that he published in the Atlantic, uh, and one essay for each year of Obama presidency. Uh, now you know you can think whatever you want about Obama and Trump and so on. I will not go into into that discussion. What this book did to me, this book really opened my eyes on the. Uh, issue of uh, of um, a racial divide in uh, in the United States and and um, it then prompted me actually to read quite a lot of books uh, uh, on on the on the subject and I'm sure I will do a video for Black History Month next time it it, it comes up but uh, you know these are essays really you know. Uh, shaped me uh, i must say uh you know under understanding a uh, situation of of, of Afri african americans or at least you know how it's portrayed from their perspective or perspective that stan hasse codes is, is representative is um yeah I, I, let's not go into, <laughs> into into details there i just you know can recommend to every, anybody that is interested to read to read this book it gives you really really good uh good perspective now, uh, next book, next uh, question. Sorry, I'm keep keep telling next book with next question here. Number seven, literature does not have a universally accepted definition. What is yours? And this is, you know, it's pretty difficult question. Uh, when I say literature, you know, you can say any text, fiction or non-fiction, or, or we can just, you know, stay on a fiction. So then, fiction, you know, what 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 is fiction? And fiction is is a uh, is a uh, is a text uh, uh, from from as a, I liked really uh, Steve Donahue's definition of the uh, I think he said the text from a given period of time and I would add on that that uh, has the objective to uh, entertain entertain and or inform that could be um, a definition or entertain inform and convey and convey an idea or awake a feeling or it's, it's it's pretty pretty difficult to to have a to give a definition of this so i understand that there is a question i mean i'm really really lousy at answering that question so i will just you know move move on move on to number eight philosophy is the love of wisdom have you read the book of philosophy do you have a favorite yes i've been reading philosophy uh off and on since my adolescence uh, and the field of philosophy where I actually spent you know most of my reading time is the philosophy philosophy of science uh, and there is a book that I read uh, during my period uh, in grad school uh, and um, 
and that I often come back to and it's actually has shaped my my perspective on science and it was shaped very much of of of, of my scientific research that, that that I've been doing is this book here by Karl Popper the logic of scientific discovery a chunkster but it's a, it's a it's a really really groundbreaking work uh, and this is the whole movement of falsificationism falsificationism uh, where you are where you, that gives a view on knowledge uh, as uh, a constant uh, constant flow of approximations whereby you are for uh, different areas that you are that you are uh, exploring you can based on the information that you have you formulate a hypothesis that need to be formulated in a way that that it has to be falsifiable so you should be able to falsify it to say that you know you say something is like this and you should be able to say no it's not and present the data and then when you do that then you know how things are not but you are never able actually to prove anything <laughs> you can only corroborate uh, a hypothesis so you formulate a hypothesis then you do your best your really sincere best to falsify it and if you can falsify it you have advanced the knowledge by saying by knowing okay this is not in this way at least but you cannot you cannot prove anything you can just corroborate a hypothesis and say okay you try to falsify it you not succeed you have corroborated hypo hypothesis and and by you know this falsification process you are kind of narrowing narrowing down uh, the, the you know the different explanations of, of, of phenomena and this you know approximation uh, gives you actually what the what the reality is and and, and reality or the truth is it's uh, it is nothing not something solid in 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 um, in uh, in the popper's philosophy it is it is it is coming as a uh, like the 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 other side of metal so 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 this uh, you know this work is is a uh, is fantastic work of philosophy that really really shaped my scientific uh, uh, views and, and, and pers perspective on science religion name a book or author that you have read that has influenced your own personal view of religion and my own personal view of religion whew, that's what i'm exploring now in maybe midrash it's really uh, uh it's really nothing that i've been reading a lot about i i mentioned i mentioned Per uh, and i really like Per Lagerqvist, and he's been doing lots of w works on on um that that is uh that are exploring you know the divine and and um and meditate on um, on the human experience so there are two books of him that that i come back very often to you know this is this is the one uh, the first one the barabbas uh, uh, book uh, about the 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 biblical villain barabbas uh, acquitted uh, when when jesus was crucified and then the second is the the collection of poems by Per Lagerqvist, uh, Evening Land, in Swedish here, Aftonland, uh, meditations really on, uh, on life. Uh, and and uh, uh, exploration, exploration of the divine. So this is what I, would, what I would link with the question number nine. Question number 10. Performing arts, musicology, theater and dance often put the performer front and center do you have a favorite performer if so who is it and why did you appreciate their work is there a book about this performer yeah performing arts um what i'm thinking of when i th think about performing arts it's um i'm thinking of the first one that comes on my mind and that I like quite a lot, but that is very controversial. So I really, really hope that I will not, you know, make any people angry. I need to look for her book here in my in this room here. Huh? Coming out from the heart of darkness. So this is um, Marina Abramovic. 
Uh, here is her autobiography. Uh, Goyen and Vegar in Swedish. I don't, I'm not sure how is it, how is it called in English? Yeah, original, yeah, Walk Through Walls. Walk Through Walls, Marina Abramovich. So, so I would say, you know, when it comes to performing arts, she's, uh, she's the one. And then when it comes to music in general, I listen to lots of different music and, and, uh, and um, there are, you know, it's very, very difficult to pick any specific performer. I like classical music, music though. And here, and I have actually a book that uh, that uh, I bought uh, when Lukash uh, from Totally Pretentious recommended uh, about classical music. And this, this is really a chunkster, but it's fantastic. It's really, really, really great book. This one, uh, the classical music lovers companion to orchestral music. Uh, so you know, here a collection of you know all the works of classical music that you can imagine, giving you background and giving you giving you analysis of uh, of a work. It's really really great. Both both me and my wife are are, are enjoying this uh, very much and using it when, when when exploring new new works of classical music. So so this is uh, yeah. Thank you, Lukash. Um, now. Let me see, and I'm opening these questions here on my iPad and it's closing down all the time, so that's why, you know, this. Uh. Visual arts, do you have a favorite visual artist or media type? Do the two relate? Are there books that address the relation, this relationship between artist and medium? Now, visual artist and media type, I like, I like uh, paintings. I like art in, the, in, that, in that format and uh, uh, favorite uh, visual artists uh, for me, or favorite favorite painters, there are uh, a couple of them, actually, and there are uh, there are books, uh, of course, when, when it comes to when it comes to artists, uh, lots of them that are you know analyzing and and and, and linking the art to to to. Um, to the medium and so on. It's uh, here is one of at least this is how I understood the question. Now maybe, maybe uh, somebody will tell. But this is not what he asked about. But this is how I interpret it at least. Okay. So here, um, um, here uh, J, uh, J M W Turner is uh, is one of my favorites, uh, and there are lots of lots of books obviously about about his art, that analyzing his art and presenting his his select, uh, selected uh, works. And this is one. Published by Prestel uh, in series of Masters of Art, uh, which I which I like. Another artist that I that I uh, that I like quite a lot is uh, J W Waterhouse, uh, and uh, this is a, uh, published by uh, Faydon, uh, and it's a collection of uh, great collection of, of of his work. Lots of his work is actually at the Tate Britain in, in London. Uh, I visit there a couple of times and look look at his work. Uh, fascinating uh, artist and the one that that I'm quite uh, liking quite a lot right now and and I'm very much into and want to learn more about is this one Tintoretto uh, artist of Renaissance Venice it's, it's a rebel it's a David Bowie's favorite artist by the way was allegedly uh, and uh, uh, I will try to find an excuse to get back to Tintoretto because it's so fascinating character and fantastic art. So we're gonna get back to this one. Ho hopefully, hopefully, I'm promising lots of things here. I, 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 we need to make like hundred videos uh, uh, soon. So, so this is visual art uh, eleven, and then twelve tag someone. Uh, uh, well, I don't know too many people on YouTube and I really I I before I started this I didn't really check if um, if uh, uh, the guys that that um, are following and following me have done this so so basically you know anybody who sees this video can consider uh, himself or herself tagged and I'm very interested in in uh, seeing uh, more of these videos I will certainly now watch watch even more of them. I should have done that before I did my video. I realized that, but uh, but I didn't. So so this is one learning from, a, you know, just excuse me, I'm a, I'm a newbie. I still don't know the etiquette and, and uh, of, 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 uh, of book, booktube. I, mean, I, I will learn eventually. So this is my, my um, the Reading the Humanities tag. And uh, I hope that you got some inspiration from this book. If you have read any of these books or if you like any of the areas that, that I'm talking about, please leave a comment. I will be happy to, to, to have a chat about that. Uh, so, see you.